Hey, what's up, guys? I got a big DVD update for you. Got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten DVDs. Starting with the Stepfather. Finally found it. I've been looking for it for a long time. Didn't realize it was never on DVD until now. And um, <clears throat> even when I found out, it's been hard to find like anywhere. And I finally found it at Best Buy for 15 bucks. Um, and it was the last one left, so I was pretty lucky on that. Uh, just got audio commentary with uh, director Joe Ru Joseph Rubin and the Stepfather Chronicles, an all-new retrospective feature featuring interviews with uh, Joseph Rubin, Jay Benson, actress Jill Show, and author Brian, yeah, author Brian Garfield, and others on the making of the film and its enduring legacy. I watched that. It's about um, 25 to 30 minutes, and uh, it's pretty good. Um, the movie it is. Um, I haven't watched it with commentary yet, but I did watch the movie again, and I just love it every time. It's about this um, guy with the perfect American family dream. He wants the perfect family with the, you know, in the perfect neighborhood with the white picket fence and everything, and um, he's kind of out of touch with reality. So, um, <clears throat> you know, in like real life family, you know, tension starts start to arise you know you can't really handle that so he starts getting crazy and um, it turns out every time you know things in the perfect family go wrong he kills the pre the family he's with and then changes his identity moves away and then marries into a new family and that's what he does here and it's supposedly based on um, this uh, killer in the 70s who killed his family and just disappeared and this movie was made between when he was still at large and when he get, finally got caught on uh, America's Most Wanted. I forget the guy's real name, but uh, this thriller is like loosely, loosely based on that. Next up, I got Slaughter High in the uh, Body Bag Edition from Best Buy uh, for 10 bucks, surprisingly. And. Uh, I did a review of this. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I did a review of this a little while back, so you can check that for my whole opinion on it. Um, this doesn't have any features except the uh, trivia track, which I haven't watched, and uh, the actual trailer. And it's um, Supposedly the unrated version. I haven't seen the rated version. I've only seen the same thing on YouTube and um, Finally got this DVD. The more I watch it like I've watched it twice since I've got it and I like it more and more, you know, it's nothing Major it's just like you know, the average slasher movie but I don't know there's it's a certain charm about it. I like and um, This DVD like they didn't clean up the image at all so it looks really grainy and bad quality like it would have looked back in the day in the theaters. You know, it was really low budget too. And um, I like that. I like, you know, I like that they didn't clean it up. It looks, uh, with that 80s cheese charm to it. <laughs> Next, I got Critters. Um, I hadn't seen this since I was probably a little kid, like maybe five or six years old. And, um, I remember always liking this better than the Gremlins. Um, I remember it scaring me a lot because of the way the the monsters just roll around like balls. And the, uh, it's, it's hard to explain. You have to see it, but um, it's really nasty. It's like they roll around and jump and just bite you, and it's all gory. And you know that scared me as a kid. It's no picnic for the Brown family when a lethal, l yeah, lethal litter of carnivorous aliens arrives. Unannounced at their Kansas farm, trapped in a deadly nightmare, the terrified Browns fight for their lives against the attacking bloodthirsty monsters. <clears throat> it's a losing battle until two intergalactic bounty hunters arrive, determined to blow the hellish creatures off the planet. It's an alien adventure full of action and just crawling with critters. Um, 
It's directed by Stephen Herrick, uh, produced by Robert Shea. Uh, in New Line Cinema, you know, they were famous for the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Um, yeah, I watched it again once, and um, it still kind of had the same effect. Supposedly has a hidden alternate ending. Uh, I haven't found that. I've only looked at, the, only watched the trailer, and um, no other features besides you know widescreen full scene, blah blah blah. And next, I got nothing but trouble. Uh, it's got Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, and Demi Moore. Uh, I always loved this as a kid, I always watched it on HBO whenever it came on, um, and I watched it again a couple days ago, and it wasn't as funny as I remember it being, so maybe I sort of grew out of the humor or something, I don't know, but, I mean, it's still a fun movie to watch, you know, the way the plot goes and all that, but it's, the jokes just fall flat now that I watch it again. So, it's still good to have, you know, for the nostalgia factor. But in case you haven't seen this, I'll just read the back. Um, Chevy Chase, Demi Moore, John Candy, and Dan Aykroyd are nothing but uproarious in this cockney, cockeyed comedy written and directed by Dan Aykroyd. Packing more ghoulish glee than Beetlejuice. <clears throat> Welcome to Falkenvania, the twilight zone of speed traps. One wrong turn off the New Jersey turnpike and stock market whiz chase an investment lawyer more end up there. One minor driving violation and they're hauled off by Valkenvania's finest John Candy to the park to the park courtroom, park fun house of 106 year old justice of the peace Alvin Valkenheiser from frying pan to fire, nothing but trouble with act. I don't know. This doesn't really do it justice, but, um, just, okay. They're at this hotel. They all meet at this hotel. Chevy Chase, you know, they're, they're trying to, like, go to Atlantic City. Um, him and Demi Moore are trying to go to Atlantic City. And, uh, these two friends that they don't want to come on, you know, these two annoying friends they don't want to come on, they kind of, like, invite themselves along anyway, so... They're just like annoying him the whole trip, and then like at one point, Chevy Chase, um, he's speeding, or he like run runs past a stop sign or something like that, something stupid, and then John Kenny starts chasing him, and then pulls him over, and then somehow you know Chevy Chase mouths off, and then he gets into trouble, and then John Kenny ends up taking him to this uh, courtroom, and it's all like. It's all, it's really, man, you'd have to see it, but, um, yeah, from that point, it just gets funnier and funnier. They get, like, into these weird situations, and, you know, it's all gross, and everything's gross. Like, Dan Aykroyd plays, you know, this old-looking dude right here. I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, he looks gross in the makeup, and then, uh, at one point, he even takes his nose off and leg off, and it's like gets even grosser and then he plays this like big overgrown baby looking thing you'd have to see it <laughs> it's hard Next, to explain uh, another favorite of mine a uh, childhood favorite don't tell mom the babysitter's dead it's got Christina Applegate um, directed by Stephen Herrick the guy who did Critters um, and let me see it's a summer full of unexpected fun and foul play when mom takes a trip to australia leaving sue ellen christina applegate and the kids behind what they didn't expect was the babysitter mom left to take care of them an elderly tyrant who wants who's ready to make their lives miserable until she kills over dead on the first night now the kids figure they can have the summer the summer of their dreams, only they don't have any money for the basics like movies, dates, and pizza. It's up to Sue Ellen to find a job to make it in the, in the adult world. She has to, to fake it from the top of her resume to the tip of her nail polish. If she succeeds, Sue Ellen uh, and the kids are going to have a uh, summer they'll never forget so long as they don't tell mom the babysitter's dead.